You are now listening to the Arts Indie Crossroads Show. Here Will Sasso stars for Mad TV and uh, another series coming out on CBS. Your intro there sounded like I was uh, just making my way down to the ring for a MMA fight. Three interviews with Ruth Moody, the Willing Jenny. You're so welcome. Take care. Karen LeBlanc, the star of Nurse. The fighter boy. Hi, Nick. I'm really good. I'm really good, and thank you for asking People me. in film, theater, music, the arts. I like your interview because it's casual, mm. and it's real. It's down to earth, and it suits Hastings Street right here, right now. A good early evening to everyone here in the Valley. You're listening to Civil Radio 101.7 FM, broadcasting to the Fraser Valley from the UFE Abbotsford campus on the traditional and unceded territory of the Stolo people. A good early evening to everyone here in the Fraser Valley, which includes Langley, Abbotsford, of course, Chilliwack, Maple Ridge, and uh, other parts of the Lower Mainland. You can, uh, yeah, very clearly in Surrey, you can hear Civil Radio 101.7 FM and uh, parts of the GVRD or other parts of the GVRD in New Westminster and uh, Delta. So uh hope everyone is doing well and on the way to getting their second shot. I just had mine two days ago. Um, and uh, doing okay. So yeah, don't be scared. Uh, you, you hear the stories some. Some people get sick, not everyone. So if you had no problem with the first shot, mostly you should be okay. But don't worry, you might be just tired for a day or a little sore, and uh, you'll be fine. And everything eventually will be back to normal. It pretty much, we're almost there, because a lot of live shows going on for comedy. Music, I don't have my the pulse on yet, but I know, oh yeah, there's a blues event up in Vancouver, uh, Sunday afternoons. Uh, it was always a uh, nighttime that uh, Steve Kozak, Wednesday nights that Steve Kozak jammed at uh, Pat's Pub there on Hastings and Princess. But uh, BC Housing bought the building. Uh, it used to be a motel, actually famous, inexpensive for tourists coming into town. So he could... Uh, jam late in the night but now it's uh, bc housing uh social housing so yeah it gets kind of loud if they pay music too late but i heard uh there's rumors that uh pat's pub is gonna move uh they're actually leasing it now uh the ex-owner who uh is running the bar out of pat's pub now leasing uh, he sold the building and made a chunk of change, like a lot of money. So he'll he'll be able to invest somewhere else easily. I don't know. What, I guess he's looking for a place. And then the blues, um, Steve Kozak and um, other musical Max uh, acts will be back to late nights. But right now it's Sunday afternoons, uh, I think 3 to 5. I'll confirm that for you next week. But definitely it's happening from 3 to 5. But I don't know what time it starts. So I got some new tracks from Jared Tyler. Um, I can't remember the name of the tracks. <laughs> Sorry, I have to. I got them uh, saved. It's just I'm recording right now. So if I try to look them up. Uh, yeah, I can do it right now. So uh, you're going to hear two new tracks uh, to kick the show off. And then you're going to hear part of his interview from a couple of months ago. Yeah, just what's what's been going on with Jared and his collaboration, his uh, what he's writing. And of course, we had to touch on COVID and we did. So uh, don't hesitate to call me, uh, email me at nickindy2000 at yahoo.ca. That's Nick, N-I-C-K, Indy. INDY2000 at yahoo.ca. And I'm sorry about last week. I, I didn't have a show for you. Uh, I just had kind of an emergency having to help someone and going to the hospital. And it actually took longer than I thought it would. So, um, yeah, I'll 
always have something prepared in case something happens so I can just shoot off a new show. So, uh, yeah, I hope to hear from you if uh, you have anything going on. And I'm sure, yeah, there's a lot happening. Things are opening up. Actually, uh, Maple Ridge, yeah, there's uh, live comedy events happening over there. Uh, there's one comedy group, uh, production group, I forgot the name, but they're going further. They want to, they're taking initiative to go further outside of Vancouver and to Surrey. They've been to Maple Ridge and hopefully they come down to Abbotsford, Chilliwack. Because, uh, yeah, th there's been events in the past. I don't know if Yuck Yucks in Abbotsford is going to open up again. We'll see. But Yuck Yucks in Vancouver hasn't found a new location. Uh, COVID. Post-COVID, they shut down. But there's a lot of other comedy events, uh, venues that have opened up. We got the House of Comedy back to full force, putting on featured events. And then uh, local comics also performing there during the week. That's the House of Comedy in New Westminster, which used to be Laugh Lines, but was bought out by House of Comedy. So enough talking. This is one of the tracks. Then you're going to hear another one. From the Jared Tyler Band.
Listeners, uh, as I as I mentioned last week, I hit out an email to Jared of the Jared Tyler Band, and uh, you've heard his music off and on on the Arts Indie Crossroad Show. But we have Jared Tyler on the line right now, and uh, Jared, uh, how have you been? How are you doing? And yeah, I noticed uh, over the last couple of weeks, off and on, yeah, I've actually you've been sending out some uh, tracks. Have you, have you been able to work on your music in the last year in this chaos? Actually, yeah, I've done, I've done quite a bit of stuff. I've been constantly doing things because there's nothing else to do. <laughs> what, like, what else are you going to do? So, yeah, I've, uh, I've been working on tons of stuff. <clears throat> Actually, you know, it's, it's interesting. I, uh, I got an email from this girl that I know from my like, college, like way back... And so she's down in Austin, Texas, and her name's Heidi. And so we've been doing, uh, you know, working on some music. And originally it started as, I was just going to produce some of her tracks. But when she sent them over, I was like, yeah, but, you know, we could sort of change this around a little bit. And so then it it turned into like a co-write situation where um, I would would help her co-write it. And then, you know, and then I produced it. And so then it was like, kind of like a co-effort so that's what i've been doing uh for the last maybe four months and you know we're up to we're up to about nine songs now on this album and i guess so she's gonna sing maybe five of them i'll sing five of them and um i I just had a bunch of songs kicking around that that i already wrote i'm gonna put those on there so it'll be like five of mine and then five that i co-wrote with her that she sings so in a way, it's almost like a Fleetwood Mac uh, situation where, you know, she'll sing half of them, I'll sing half of them. And um, it's cool. Like, I've never co-written before. It's the first time I ever did it, and it actually worked out pretty good. For those of, of us who are, aren't musicians, uh, how, how are you guys communicating? What platform? Like uh, Zoom? Zoom or? Well, she keeps telling me to go on Zoom, but uh, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm basically inept almost when it comes to apps and and like i use a flip phone you know and 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 it's it's true i do i do use a flip phone i know how to produce because i've been doing it for like 20 years so of course i know like i have my system and i know what to do but like outside of that i'm kind of hopeless so mostly it's just been like we talk through the phone and then she'll send me her tracks through dropbox which is like a file sharing Oh yeah. Thing. And um so we had to work out some kinks there and but anyway, so she's sending me over these uh these tracks where it's like her voice and, and an acoustic guitar and then I'll put on drums and bass and piano and organs and guitars and whatever and then turn it into like a full band scenario once I've taken the song and sort of added my input to it. So <clears throat> excuse me, so yeah, we've got like, I think we're at like nine songs now, and we're thinking we're going to cap it at ten, but, you know, she keeps writing songs, and I keep writing songs, so, and then also, I was working on this new album of my own stuff called Middle of Infinity, and so that's now at ten songs, so, um, I just finished like the last song for it, so I'm going to master it, and then, so I'll be able to release that, I'll release that with her at some point, we haven't even figured out a name um, or anything yet we're just focusing on the music so yeah it's been it's been busy just like constant recording constant recording 
I was just curious. Are, are you working with uh, your partner from the past on production, Ollie Oliver C? I just talked to Ollie the other day, actually. Oh, I yeah. just talked to him. When I got back, I talked to him. I said, "Hey, buddy, what's up?" And he's like, "You know, he's actually working on some some stuff of his own." So I think at some point I'm going to go over there. We we're thinking of writing something together. You know, this co-writing thing, I've never really done it. And I've always thought like, how do you co-write with somebody? Because co-write situations to my understanding have always been a group of people that wake up at like eight in the morning and they put on their turtlenecks, you know, and they have their, they have their tea and their lemon and their little lyric books. And it just seems so structured and scheduled. I just like, I don't even know how anything gets done. Like with me, it's like meditative. You know, I do it at like three in the morning by candlelight. Wow, this is a revelation. I thought you co-wrote with Jeremy and Oliver sometimes. You never said anything. No one mentioned anything. My hunch that you guys kind of collaborated because when these guys got together, it was always like uh, inside jokes, the improv. I, I just thought it was like a natural, organic thing. You guys, when you're together, you would you would be doing a lot of co-writing, but that was all you. Uh, well, there's yeah. a difference between playing with hacks and playing with like really high level well-schooled musicians like there's a huge difference right so um i try to play with high level musicians right i mean so when you do that what happens is you know you don't really have to necessarily uh sit there and go through everything with a fine tooth comb and say listen this is exactly how it has to be like they they have an understanding like an innate understanding of what you're going for especially if you have a recording like usually with those guys oliver and jeremy i would record something i'd record a song basically from top to bottom and then i would show them the song and i'd say this is this is my new song and so then when i bring it to the rehearsal they would kind of put their own spin on the drum beat and the bass and it was usually better right like uh so so it was an improvement live i think um but with with hack musicians that are just sort of like jam musicians it's you might get lucky, but it's it's pretty much, you know, like if you're working with uh, refined musicians, it's I think I think you're going to be able to get that improv, and, you know, because because sometimes yeah, like we would I remember playing a song called Love Like This, and we used to improv the shit out of that song, and just you know you can do that with 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 those sorts of musicians, but I don't know I find with like these these guys that like carry a guitar case around, it's just like. I don't know. Maybe they have a tusk around their neck and like a hemp necklace or something. <laughs> like, I don't know. Those guys kind of, I, I, I just like, I've never really, I think I jammed with like one or two of those guys and it's just, they're like riff based people. Whereas like Jeremy and Oliver can, can hear a song and then they know right away, like where they can go with it. Right. Like, like the parameters of how much you can screw around with it. So, I mean, that's prob that's probably what you're talking about. Right. Is that, is that what you're, yeah, uh, you articulated uh, much better. Uh, I don't know if I picked up the same vibe before, but now I, I totally understand what you're saying. Like, because uh, Oliver and Jeremy are, are totally, totally on very. Well, I guess it's like if you're a, you know, if you're an actor, say, like I've I've never acted, I don't know, but if but but if you're an actor, I would assume that if you're in an ensemble cast and you're dealing with high level actors. Then you know, for instance, like Apocalypse Now, I watched uh, I watched a documentary about Apocalypse Now. It was it was filmed by uh, Francis Ford Coppola's wife, Eleanor. And if you've never seen it, you really should. It's called uh, I think it's called Hearts of Darkness, right? Based oh, on the, the Joseph, book, yeah. Based on the Joseph Conrad novel, which which the movie's based on, right? That's where she took that name from. But if you look at it, you got actors like. Like Brando, Sheen, Dennis Hopper, like all these yeah. crazy actors, and like most of it's improv. It like was, fact, yeah, serious? yeah. Like like uh, Marlon Brando showed up one day, um, and he was totally overweight. He'd shaved his head. He hadn't read the script. He didn't know anything. So pretty much that was all like just improv, man. And the uh, documentary's hilarious, man. There's like clips of it on on, yeah. on YouTube and. Wow, he that was improv, you know I Then I. I cried like a grandmother. So that was all improv, Brando. Oh. That's a pretty good rendition of Brando, man. That's 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 not bad. Uh, thanks. But he's good, yeah. Like so so what I'm saying is that I think if if you're doing a film with 
you know, high level actors, like method actors, you know, then probably like improv's the best thing. But I mean, if you're doing it with, uh, say like a guy like Ryan Reynolds or something, I mean, probably, you know, probably it's like, you got to stick to a script and it's got to be, you know, I mean, it's, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's like the difference between like an artist and like a performer. Right. So I would say that Jeremy and Oliver, as far as I'm concerned, like, um, definitely artists, you know, like they, there's an art to their input. You know, it's not just like, they're not, they're not just following keys and notes and rests and counts. Like there's, they're experiencing the, the song, but they can also improv it to a point where it breathes a certain life into it. You know, I mean, so I would write a song, essentially I'd write a song and I would, I'd record it and then I'd bring it to Jeremy and Oliver. And I think to sum it up, they would make it better. Right. The only pity was that we, we never recorded those, right. It was, it was recorded one way. So there was like two different versions. There was like a version where you would hear it on CD or whatever. And then another version where you would hear it live. And I, I always felt the live version was better just because it was a little more lively. There was a little more spontaneity to it. Whereas like the recordings were very, uh, you know, like when you're recording, you want everything to be perfect, right? So everything's, it's set perfectly to a click and you get like 20 takes if you need it to get it right. And everything's just, it's perfect, right? Whereas live, you, you know, you can go around a bit and you can sort of, I don't know, you can mess it up and whatever. It's like you can roll with it. So I tended to like them both, but I think I like the, the live stuff. I told them we should have done a live album. I was like, you know, definitely should have done that, but that's, that's a whole nother thing to do. Eventually. Yeah. Uh, I, I forgot the name, uh, who you're co-writing with. She's from Austin. What's her name? Uh, uh Heidi. Yeah. I, I, oh, sorry. I, yeah. Yeah. I know her since, uh, I've known her since college. Like, Oh yeah. Um, you reconnected. I've been singing for years. Like she's been, she's been doing her thing for years and, and, um, like I'd lost touch with her for years and then she got, she got in touch with me and, you know, we spent a lot of time on the phone just catching up and then she's like, yeah, I'm going to send you some, some of my tracks. And like, when I heard him, I was like, these are actually rad. Like you could, you could do something with these if you had, um, you know, some, some, some instrumentation, some production on like they'd sent rad, maybe a few little changes on it. She's like, go to it, bro. And then we did it. So. Um, like I said, we've got like nine songs. Oh, and then, and then, uh, we did, um, South by Southwest after party, which <clears throat> it was all online, but it was like, they asked people to, uh, here, like, you know, submit a live performance oh. and then, yeah. And then we'll play it. So. We actually, me and Jeremy and Oliver, I, I, I used a recording that we did in our rehearsal space, and submitted it. So we actually, I actually technically did South by Southwest after party with all Oliver and Jeremy. I was just wondering about Heidi's, uh, yeah, you haven't seen her for a while, but it, has she performed, uh, where's she been performing? Like, I guess Aust uh, she's been obviously performing in Texas and what are the places like? Well, she's, she's toured and, you know, she's been doing stuff down in Texas for years. Um, she was actually the one that got us into the South by Southwest. That's why I bring it up. But so she's, I guess my point is, is that she's, she's heavily involved in the administration side down there too. Like she oh, does awesome. live, live performing, but she's essentially an A&R representative for a, for a music company right now. And she's, you know, she's sort of into all those sorts of things. So <clears throat> she's she's up to a lot of stuff and I guess, you know, music has always been one of them. Right. So, um, I don't think either of us expected it to sound as good as it does. Right. So is there kind of a, what kind of, uh, genre or, uh, style did you identify right away through her writing and maybe some of her performing when you first contacted her? It sounds like, what I liked about some of it is that it sounded like old Mazzy Star from the 90s, some of it, oh, yeah. and mixed with weird, like, almost like there's a there's a Cheryl Crow feel to it as well. And she actually co-wrote a song with a guy named Artie, who 
I guess he was involved with Cheryl Crow and a bunch of other artists down there. And, and so she wrote this song, like co-wrote a song with him. And then she gave me this same song that they kind of co-wrote together. And then I, I also had a hand in it and then I produced it. So it's, it's like, actually that was like a three-way co-write and, um, that'll be on there too. But it's like, there's actually some really good songs on it. I was, I was, I was pretty stoked when I was listening to it the other day. I, I went for a jog and I was listening, listening on my headphones to some of the almost finished tracks. And it's like, it's good. It's, it's solid for sure. Yeah. Jared, uh, listeners don't know, uh, you've been away. You've been in the States over the past year and some crazy things you've experienced. And I don't know if, uh, how much you want to talk about that, but the thing about different experiences and, and and chaos is you can harvest a lot of content for your writing and, and your art in general. Do you find that? Pardon me? L- uh, like uh, different experiences and, you know, chaos, uh, maybe anxiety, being uncomfortable. Like what's, what's been, oh, hap- what, what's been happening in the past year? Like you, you can harvest a lot of unique things, uh, kind of, great things in your art like you're writing you're performing do you, do you notice i don't know i mean i don't uh i think i think there's 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 something to be said for isolation too like when you're isolated it's like i i have a couple friends up in like the northwest territories and these guys are crazy artists because a lot of them are isolated 